this lecture we're going to discuss porcupine curvature analysis. This tool allows us to measure the radius of curves and surface boundaries. Again, this is a very big tool. There's a lot in this tool that we can discuss. I'm going to try to keep this as straightforward and relevant to most people's day-to-day -day use. If you are interested in a podcast on the tool, please email me. You'll see a link down below, info at classiservicing.com, and uh, we can um, get a podcast put together to discuss porcupine curvature analysis. Now, the way this tool works is you can simply pick one curve and analyze that curve that you see before you. I can pick this curve and analyze this curve as well. Now what you'll notice is it puts up this red looking analysis with a green curve. What you're actually seeing are lots and lots of porcupine quills. These quills are so tight and dense on this curve it looks like it's painted on. Now this is the actual density that we are talking about here. I can reduce the density to get a good indication of what the curve looks like without actually pixelizing that curve so much that I lose the characteristics of said curve. What you want to do is you want to get this actual envelope curve, which is right here, turning it on and off, to look relatively smooth and not uh, faceted or pixelated. So when we analyze that curve, we have a nice representation of what that curve looks like. Here we are analyzing the radius of the curve, or I can measure the inverse curvature. Now when I go to curvature, I have to increase the amplitude. So I'll just double click, triple click, quadruple click over and over again. I can type in the value if I want to, to increase the size of that quill. Now, curvature actually measures the actual curvature of said curve. Now, I can run my cursor along each quill to get an idea of what the curvature is at that specific location. If I go to radius, and this time I'm going to have to shrink this again, and I measure the radius, you'll see I have the inverse value of curvature, which is radius. Now, I can select, by holding on the control key, multiple curves to analyze. And what this does is it puts a porcupine analysis on that curve as well. What's really nice about this porcupine analysis is that, and I'll show you how in a moment, once I select OK, it stays active and it's live and I'm able to adjust the curves visually by using the porcupine analysis and I don't necessarily have to look at the curve as much to get a good looking clean curve. As you can see, this curve has multiple peaks, it sort of gets wavy. Just looking at the curve, dead eyeing it, you don't really see that because the, uh, the, the amount of radius change isn't super significant to the eye on a small screen. But if this were, let's say, a body panel on a car, which is fairly large, or the IP, and you have those big character curves, that would be more noticeable there. So this allows us to really dig deep into the minutia and visualize the curve as such. Uh, there's a graph here. And we will talk more about the graph in uh, the advanced lecture or in a podcast sometime. But this allows you to basically analyze a specific point on either one of the curves and such. Very useful tool. You also have the ability to use an automatic amplitude. And what this does is it adjusts automatically to the screen as you zoom in and out. The issue with that is, is because I have a reversal here, this spike basically throws off the entire analysis. It makes it difficult to see the areas of uh, larger radius. I also have a logarithmic tool that I can use. And again, because this is set to automatic, 
it makes it a little difficult for me to gauge everything that I need to gauge because of, again, this little reversal. This works much better if the curvature all flows in one direction. If I turn off automatic and use my logarithmic function, you'll notice in this case it's not much of a change. Okay? Sometimes it's a greater change, sometimes it's a lesser change. Also with my density I have curvilinear. What this basically means is if I have three, four, five, six, maybe ten curves selected for my density, if I have a very, very short curve, like in this case, this is a long curve. The arc length is long. This is a relatively arc length. They're relatively the same. You can see there's a difference in what the density looks like. Now, using curvilinear, what this will do is it will sort of smooth out that density to give you more of a consistent look, even if you have a very short segment in that chain that you have selected. This gives me the particular of each curve, I can see the min-max. I have an inverse value turned on, so I can turn that on and off. So you can see the true radius value here. And I also can reverse that analysis. Sometimes it's helpful to reverse it. I'm still looking at the radius, but I'm reversing which direction the quills are pointing in. If I want to turn off the comb, I can turn off the comb and leave the envelope. I can turn on the comb and turn off the envelope as I see fit. Sometimes it's pretty handy just to turn on the envelope and lose the comb because it can crowd the screen. And if you have a lot of data on the screen, it makes it difficult to, to, to look at. One of the things that's really nice about my uh, porcupine curvature analysis is my ability to do, I'm going to turn on comb to explain a couple more things, to leave that active. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this curve. And as I modify this curve, I'm going to take this curve and I'm going to say constrain it to this point. Now you'll notice I have a point continuity across this boundary. What this means is the curve touches at that point. And with the porcupine analysis, I can see that this end quill and this end quill both touch at that location. If I make this tangent, you'll notice that the quills are now parallel to one another, so they touch and are parallel. They are of different height, but once I make this curvature, the height at that quill becomes the same. Because of that, you'll notice the green envelope curve now touches. Because they are now the same, I share the same length on that quill. Now as I zoom out, this gives me a really good ability to come in here now and make modifications to the curve as I see fit because I have a curvature continuity holding this tight, I'm a little limited as to the type of modifications I can make on that curve. But this allows me to really visually see what I'm doing with that curve. And there's a lot more advanced stuff that I'm going to talk about in the podcast that I can do with this visualization as well. Now, those are the basics between of the uh, porcupine curvature analysis.